I, I'd like to uh, address the issue from the, from the point of view of a, a practicing attorney in these particular areas. I just touched on it briefly earlier in the panel, other panel, that, uh, that when, when, I was, when I was at the Cahill Gordon law firm in New York, we were brought the Pentagon Papers at that time. Uh, and uh, Jim Goodell, the chief counsel for the, for the New York Times, uh, contacted us. I had been working on the briefs for the New York Times because I happened to have initiated the case that established the right of journalists to protect their confidential news sources when I was at the Harvard Civil Rights Law Review. So I was at the firm and was working on the briefs, and Jim Goodell brought the, the, us the information that they had the Pentagon Papers. And so it was the first time that I found myself in a situation where I had to kind of try to put myself in the shoes of people that I had the luxury prior to that time of just saying, we ought to get it all out. We ought to just reveal everything. We ought to tell all the people have a right to know everything. And uh, I found myself in this peculiar situation of starting to ask questions about what might be in there that we had to try to be careful about revealing. Now, in that particular case, it wasn't a hard question. Uh, because, you know, we, we found things about the assassination program of the Central Intelligence Agency, the Phoenix program. We found out that they were smuggling uh, opium in, in Southeast Asia to help fund it. We found out about the Nugenhan Bank that was set up by Theodore Shackley, who was the CIA station chief in, in uh, Saigon. All the things that we found out about in that particular instance, I felt, were criminal conduct, uh, unlawful conduct. And it had, it had occurred because the Central Intelligence Agency, when it was created in 1947, was uh, out of Section 5412. The 5412 Committee was set up inside the National Security Council to actually oversee covert operations. And for the first time, it actually legitimatized the undertaking of covert operations that were not going to be revealed to the Congress. It was before we had an Intelligence Committee. Uh, you, you remember that Prescott Bush, the United States Senator from Connecticut, was the one who would brief in certain Congress people and certain senators about this. So there was this entire kind of extra uh, constitutional process or protocols that began to be undertaken right at the very beginning. Finally, they set up the 5412 committee inside the National Security Council that oversaw those things. And w as I said, I had never had access to that until we saw the Pentagon Papers. And on reviewing it with Neil Sheehan and the others, I came to the conclusion that all of this should be revealed, that these were, were criminal activities that, that had happened, that were all happening outside of the United States. But they were having such dramatic effects inside the United States that I thought they ought to be talked about. Uh, 